Hey everyone, welcome to this week's broadcast of Waterwind Wine Ministries. As you can see, it is a rainy, cold mess in Northern California today. So I don't want to stay out here very long. It's really, really cold. But I did want to share a couple of things with you. I'm going to record two videos in this time that we have together. And they're both really, really important. The first thing I want to talk to you about is found in Mark chapter 10. I have my Bible right here. Mark chapter 10, there's a story about a rich young ruler coming to Jesus saying, Lord, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? Now, first of all, you don't do anything to inherit anything because inheriting means that you're born with it or born into it just by, by virtue of who you are. Um, isn't that pretty? Anyway, I'm gonna walk around just so that you guys can see the view from my front porch. Anyway, so he asked Jesus what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. Now, I'm not gonna really deal with what Jesus said to him and the whole thing. You know the story. The story is that Jesus told him to sell what he had, go give to the poor and the rich young ruler, and then to come and follow him. And the rich young ruler went away sad because he had a lot of possessions. And um, there's so much in this that I could teach on. I'm just not going to. But what I am going to teach on is the fact that later on, when the disciples ask Jesus about the situation, he talks to them about entering the kingdom of God. Now, right when the rich young ruler leaves, Jesus says to the disciples how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. So after that, the disciples ask him about this and Jesus says to them in Mark chapter 10, verse 24, he says how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. And this verse and verses like this have been used to keep people from having money which it's odd that the church has used this to keep people from having money and then the church has all the money, which is weird. Certain churches and Christian religions, I'm just saying, they have a lot of money. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's trusting in riches that causes you to have a problem entering the kingdom of God. Now, what does that mean exactly? Does that mean you can't enter heaven? Does that mean you're not saved if you have money or even if you trust money? Is that what that means? That's not what it means. You'll notice throughout scripture, there is the kingdom of God mentioned and the kingdom of heaven mentioned. I've been asked what the difference is, and I may have even posted a video about the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. But people don't get it. The kingdom of heaven is heaven. It's heaven, up there, heaven. The kingdom of God is here. Jesus said that the kingdom of God does not come. I'm sorry, I kicked a chair if you heard that. <laughs> the, Jesus said that the kingdom of God does not come with observation, but it is inside you. It's within you. And so, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to get you too close to my face, but it's hard. Anyway, the kingdom of God is within you. It is not something that's out there like the kingdom of heaven is out there. When we think about manifesting the kingdom of God, what we need to think about is manifesting heaven on earth. We manifest freedom. We manifest prosperity. We manifest health. We manifest life. Those are things that exist in the kingdom of heaven. And when we are manifesting the kingdom of heaven on earth, that is called manifesting the kingdom of God. Why I'm bringing this up, why I'm going into such detail about this is that when Jesus says right here in Mark chapter 10, he is saying that if you trust in riches, it's hard for you to enter the kingdom of God. Well, if the kingdom of God isn't a physical place, it doesn't come with observation, it's inside you, you can't enter inside yourself, you can't enter inside another person, it doesn't really make sense. Aha. This is why it doesn't make sense. Because the word enter can be translated as enter, but it can also be translated as something else. The Greek word can actually be translated as arise or to cause to arise. So when Jesus is saying how hard it is for somebody who trusts in riches to enter the kingdom of God, he's actually saying how hard it is for those who trust in riches 
to cause the kingdom of God to arise, to manifest. Think about it. If you have a lot of money and you trust in your money to get you a doctor, to get you shelter, to get you clothes, to keep you in out of the rain and out of the cold, to get you food, then you trust in your riches. You trust in money. You say, I have money and money's what I need. And I'm not saying that you don't have money and money's a tool and I disagree with being poor completely. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying that if you are thinking that the money is where your source is, then you're wrong. First of all, you have, but God is your source, number one. Number two, if you're trusting in those riches to bring about the kingdom of heaven, because all those things I mentioned, having a place to live, having food in your belly, having health, those are all things that are existent in the kingdom of heaven. And those are all things that people buy with money. They're, typic they're, they're basically manifesting the kingdom of heaven, but they're doing it with money. So what he's saying is, if you trust in money and riches to manifest the kingdom of God, then you won't manifest the kingdom of God because you'll rely on your riches. Incidentally, I know from personal experience and I know from experience from other people that if you say to yourself, I don't really have to learn how to manifest the kingdom of God because I have enough money, I can just pay for my insurance and get my prescriptions and pay my bills and have my house and have my everything. If you do that, I guarantee you, I guarantee you with every part of my being that the enemy will challenge that. The enemy will come against that. And you know why? Because you're making money, you're God, and you're not living in manifesting the kingdom of God. It's hard for people who have a lot of money because they trust their money to manifest God. It's hard for them to rely on just faith in God alone and not money to get the things that they need. It's hard for somebody who has $50,000 in the bank to say, I'm not going to touch this $50,000 to pay my mortgage payment this, this month. I am going to believe God for the extra amount on top of my $50,000 that'll pay my mortgage. It's hard for people to do that because they don't see the reason to do it. They don't see the, un they don't understand why it's important. They think, well, I have the, I mean, I've even, I've even heard people say it's wisdom. They think I have the money in the bank. Why would I believe God for extra? Because he's already given it to me. He's already provided. It's already in the bank. And while that's a little bit true, what typically happens is people don't, they, they stop believing God. They stop manifesting the kingdom of God because of stuff like that. And so what I'm telling you is that if you want to make it to the time of the end, if you want to manifest the kingdom of God, enter the kingdom of God here on earth, bring about things that are miraculous that the world desperately needs, then you have to train yourself not to trust in your riches to manifest those things that are in the kingdom of heaven here on earth, which would be the kingdom of God. When you have the money in the bank, believe God for extra money. When you have the ability to go take a medication, believe God that you can be healed without taking the medication. When you have, believe God, and you will avoid the trap of a person who trusts in riches not being able to manifest the kingdom of God. I'm so sorry that this light has been so weird today. I hope that you've stuck with me, and I hope that you watch the next video. Remember that I love you and that Jesus loves you.